And so today we're going to talk about helping adopted children with grief. A lot of kids who experience grief feel ashamed about it because it feels like so much. It's primal. It's deep. It's overwhelming. It shows up at times when you don't want it to at a birthday party or you see your friend who looks just like their mother and you start thinking about who do you look like and your grief just shows up. You'll know when your child is experiencing shame because if you listen, observe, watch, and listen, they talk to themselves in a shameful way. A lot of kids say, I'm no good, I'm stupid, I'm deficient, I'm bad, I'm worthless, I'm unlovable. And you'll hear them. And when you hear them and really take that in, it's hard to hear. But once you hear it and you know it and you're able to acknowledge it, there is treatment for it, which I'm going to teach you right now. Now, when, when a person feels shame, they do feel like there's little they can do to fix it. And they feel utterly rejected, which is one of the core themes in adoption. And as a result, they're likely to deny, lie, make excuses, or blame others for their behavior because they can't separate themselves from their behavior. It's all globbed in one. It's like living in a bubble, and in the bubble is a mirror, and all they see is their bad self. And so when someone points out what they're doing bad, they take it very personally because all they see is, oh, I'm so bad. and what happens is the parent who continuously points out the negative self-concept, the child's going to implode on its own self and feel so terrible, so bad, and not be able to take any responsibility for their actions. And it becomes, yes, a narcissistic wound. This is the irony. And when a parent is not educated and not aware, they actually create this narcissistic wound and it becomes even worse. And then we have a child living in pervasive shame, acting out all over the place and not able to take responsibility for their actions. So individuals who are rated high on measures of shame are rated low on measures of empathy, of course, because they can't see past themselves. Individuals who experience guilt readily when wrong are rated high on measures of empathy because they can separate and recognize when I make a mistake I've and I've hurt someone, I'm not the mistake, and I feel distress towards the person I hurt. I don't feel distress towards me. I feel distress towards the person I hurt. What happens is parents will say, well, I'm going to teach them how to apologize for their actions. Well, a child who's living in shame doesn't know how to do that because when you tell them to go apologize, they're going to fight you. They're not going to do it. They're going to lie, blame, and avoid it at all costs because you're telling a child to go to your brother and I want you to apologize for hitting him. Well, that child's going to fight you, fight you, they're going to, and then the parent's going to threaten or give consequences. If you don't apologize, you're not going to get this, this, or this. Well, what happens for that child is now they're going to comply out of obligation and out of fear of not getting the what they want. So they're not going to apologize for them. They're going to apologize for you. And we're actually teaching them not responsibility but obedience and obligation. And that child goes to their brother and says, I'm sorry, but they're not apologizing to the child. What they're really saying is, because they're in that bubble with that mirror, I'm sorry, I'm so bad. And they look at the parent and go, there you go. And now I get what I want. But what happens is we reinforce shame. That child just then and there reinforced, I'm so bad, because they can't differentiate themselves from their behavior. It's all in one. There's an intervention for that, and it's called the shame witch. And the way this works 
need some markers and a list of positive affirmations because kids are going to need to separate them from their behavior. They are valuable and put all the emphasis, the not so good feelings on the behavior, but not on them. And the way this works is the bread on the bottom is their best friend inner voice speaking to them. You matter. You're valued. You're a good person. And they separate from the burger, the lettuce, the tomato. That's the bad stuff. That's the not the good stuff. That's where we're putting all the emphasis on all the stuff. The mistake is the mistake. The throwing of the toy is the mistake. And then the bread on top is you are loved. You are a good person. You're doing the best that you can. Not only are we teaching this for the child to apply to themselves, but we're teaching this for you to apply to your child. The next time you see them feeling so ashamed of them and feeling stuck in their grief and the shame of grief and the embarrassment. So you're a good person. You're doing the best that you can. And this grief is hard. And not having all the answers is hard. Or know more about your birth mother. That's hard. And you're a good person. You matter. We matter together. And here are some positive affirmations for kids so they can recognize and be able to feed themselves value, worth over and over and over. So I have made many mental health videos for kids. Yes, the sad bag, the anger bag, five ways to hack your stress. If you want to visit my YouTube channel, there's a playlist called Just Chill Mental Health Videos for Kids. And this is a wonderful meme by an adoptive parent. I've learned that loving an adopted child means grieving with him and for him. So this is the end of our presentation today. I hope that you gained a lot. I hope this has been helpful. You can visit me at my website, JeanetteYoff.com. And I hope to see you all soon. So take care and be well. Bye-bye.